Tuesday, Tuesday the 12th, 14th, Tuesday 14th of May and today we have a WRC hearing and the hearing is virtual so it's here in the office, I don't have to leave the office and have a sort of a clear calendar because of that, because it makes sense not to put in any consultations for a day that I'm doing a WRC hearing because you simply don't know how quickly uh, the hearing will go on. I don't expect today's to be too long because it is going to involve essentially I think two witnesses. So it's going to involve two witnesses and it's a discrimination case. So I'm for the employer today and it is exactly six minutes, or four minutes past six in the morning. I've heard the employer, the employee in this case is alleging discrimination against my client, the employer, and I reckon there'll only be one witness for the employee side, and there'll only be one witness for my side, the employer side. So it's a virtual hearing, it's, at, it's this morning, so I have to get ready for that now. I've got to clear my head and look closely at the story, at the narrative, at my submission on behalf of the employer and look at the submission on behalf of the client and um, or on behalf of the employee rather and just make absolutely sure that I'm clear and look at the questions that I want to be asking in cross-examination and looking at the questions that I'll be need, need to ask my client in direct examination, in other words, taking my client through her evidence. So that's what's on the agenda today. And as I say, we don't know how long it's going to go on, but I would imagine it'll be finished by lunchtime. I certainly hope it is anyway. So I've got to prepare for that now. So one of the questions there are that I asked my client in preparation for this WRC hearing, one of the things that I asked her to do was to send me a list of questions that she'd like me to ask her just in case there's anything that I overlook. So the questions that might be obvious to me to ask her in the course of direct examination, in other words, giving her evidence, those questions and the evidence to be given might be what I believe is blindingly apparent. However, there is a possibility that uh, there's stuff, some questions that I might overlook and I've asked her to send me questions that, you know, just in case, um, send me questions that I should be asking her. And she has sent me the questions and they are incredibly helpful. They are incredibly helpful and they do prove the point that there is a couple of things there that I certainly would never have thought of. Um, she, thankfully and helpfully, has thought of them. So it is really really useful now it's not often quite frankly that you're dealing with an employer and they you know are focused in on the evidence or focused in on the questions or focused in on the answers uh, as much as this lady but these questions that she sent me which i'll put to her are very very useful as i say it makes my job a lot easier and um, it's not often it happens and sometimes you have employers coming in here with all sorts of ridiculous notions or ideas in other words even the idea that an employee can bring a claim or make an allegation they, they lose their shit quite frankly over it you know it's ridiculous i mean it's if somebody brings a claim they're going to make claims they're going to make some allegations and that's just the nature of the thing like grow up grow up here balls and uh, deal with them but you know talking about soon for defamation and uh, you know what can we do like to prevent these false allegations and all this nonsense it's only a bloody employment dispute you know uh, i mean i know it can be very very costly but people are claimed or entitled to make accusations and the persons against whom the accusations are made are entitled to defend them but like do that defend them don't get up on your high horse and say oh this is terrible and uh, such and such a person shouldn't be allowed to make these allegations it's absolute nonsense this employer is on the ball quite frankly time for coffee now get my uh, my nomad cup
One thing I have to do now before the hearing this morning is to go down to Tesco and get a bottle of water. One of the most humiliating and embarrassing experiences that I ever had as a solicitor was a number of years ago, probably 10 or 11 years ago now, I never forget it though, when I was doing criminal law and I was in Kilcock District Court and I was defending a couple of lads who were accused of trespassing on a local factory and they were intent on fighting the case even though the evidence against them, ranged against them, was fairly significant and there was something like five witnesses against them. I had to cross-examine the five witnesses. It was in Kilcock District Court, and Kilcock District Court at the time was a very small little structure. It was a sort of a prefab, it may be gone now, I think it's moved to Nace completely, but it was a small little sort of a prefab structure, and it was a typical district court list, and it was absolutely stuffed that day. And I got up then to cross-examine these five witnesses, and I suffered from an absolutely horrendous bout of dry mouth and I simply couldn't get my uh, teeth or my tongue or my mouth to work properly and I couldn't ask, actually ask the questions or I could ask questions but they were unintelligible even to me to be honest about it. It was so embarrassing, it was humiliating and thankfully there was a guard there, a lady guard um, for the other side I think she may have been a prosecuting guard or involved with the prosecution, but she nipped into the toilet at the back and she got a plastic cup and got me a cup of water because she could see what the story was. But it was absolutely desperate, like talk about choking. So since then, if I was ever going to court or ever going to a WRC hearing or anything of that nature, anywhere public speaking might be involved, then I would always have a bottle of water. I kind of made a vow to myself that day that that would never happen again. So I have to go down to Tesco now and get a bottle of water. But it was the most embarrassing, most humiliating experience I've ever had as a bloody solicitor. And um, it could just happen so easily, especially when you're nervous or you're hyped up or you've a lot on your place or you think uh, you have a good chance, but you need to uh, you need to do a good job and so on, you know. But uh, Jesus was desperate. Anyway, that's the story off to Tesco there now, just traffic going to heading for Dublin, going through Enfield there now. The daily commute, wouldn't like to be doing that now I must say. Anyway, it's about five past eight, Tesco should be open now so I'm going to go up there now and get a bottle of water and hopefully not suffer from the dry mouth today. Reminds me, I have to put my bin out. I completely forgot about the ficking bin. Thing is recycling today. Anyway. That bill there now going on is the old bank in Enfield and it's a replacement for a local lad who has a physiotherapy business, I think. But it seems to be going on for ages. It really seems to be going on a long time and uh, I doubt very much he has anticipated this delay. I don't know what the problem is, maybe there's no problem at all, but it seems to be going on for Yonks and for any small business owner to be doing a development like that and for it to go up here shift that's a problem you know serious bloody problem cash flow and everything finances see my postman up here now Brendan hope to Jesus the door didn't close I think the door is open hi well, Brendan how are you doors open that's grand
Mm. One of the girls here, her daughter buys quite a lot of stuff on Amazon. She denies she's a shopaholic, but we get a lot of packages from Amazon. Anyway, it's no big deal. Now, bins. What are we looking at today? Here's the calendar here now. And today is the 14th of June, and that's purple, according to that, and that's waste. And I'm okay, I think, for waste. It's the other one, the recycling one I want to get rid of. So, I think, oh Jesus, the water's gonna fall. So go and check the waste bin. See what it's like that's been picked up today, so. Our lift is out of order at the moment and I miss it. I always use the lift. Not because I'm lazy or anything, but it's just so bloody handy. Yeah, it's not worth putting out. Not worth putting out today. Good enough shape now for the hearing there later on. I think we're in good enough shape. We'll straighten up the camera there now. There's no excuse for that. So I've all my questions done out there in relation to my direct examination of my client, and I've all the questions done out in relation to the cross examination. But one thing you need to be very mindful of in cross examination is I can't be too bogged down or tied to the questions that I've pre prepared. I must respond to the evidence that's been given because it's amazing sometimes if you listen closely to the evidence that's been given that it'll open up a question or two that could be very significant. So the key to cross-examination is actually listening first and then asking the questions and listening very, very closely because you may find some discrepancies or differences between what's given in direct evidence and what's perhaps put in the submission and the likes of uh, differences or significant differences etc are important you have to focus in on those if you can so that's why listening to the cross exam or to the evidence of the other side the witnesses and so on is absolutely critical because without that you can't cross examine effectively and um, the most tiring part probably uh, I find of a WRC hearing is actually listening to the evidence from the other side and trying to identify precisely what to ask a question about and what point or piece of evidence uh, maybe to focus in on depending on what the evidence is. So Anyway, I think we're in good shape. I think we have a good defence. I'm positive. I'm hopeful. It's uh, 25 to 9 now and um, yeah, that's it. WRC hearing is finished now and it is 3 o'clock, 10 to 3, so it went on from 10 o'clock this morning. A short break for lunch, so I think it went fairly well. We started off a little behind, I think, and I thought that the adjudicator was favouring the other side, but I think that changed as the evidence unfolded, so I'm pretty hopeful. I did my best anyway for the client, so that's the main thing, and I think the client was happy enough and the client was strong, gave good evidence. The client on the other side, uh, the complainant, I don't think was that strong, so I think we have a good chance of defending this claim, but that remains to be seen. So the adjudicator was quite good as well, and was fair and was clued in, and she's a barrister, so I'd be hopeful, but you never know with these things. Anyway, it's uh, it's been a long enough day now, and uh, it's 10 to 3, so Nice dark day outside. So it's getting very, very warm here in the office. It's warm outside as well, so. It's ten past four now and I'm heading home. It's a long enough day. People might say, oh, four o'clock, that fella has it handy. But I'm in the office at six o'clock this morning. And the WRC hearing started at 10 a.m. and I went on until to one and then we broke for half an hour and then we started back at quarter past one and we went on to three o'clock so I 
then spent between three o'clock and four o'clock catching up on phone calls, dealing with queries from my colleagues and dealing with emails and we have sales closing and purchases and conveyances ongoing as well all the time so the ordinary work of the office has to be done and when you're out of uh, incommunicado as it were when you're at a WRC hearing and you are to a great extent because your focus must be on that well then you have to spend some time catching up anyway it's not a bad evening ten past four just heading home now into Broadford and uh, we'll go for a run now and make the dinner then for for herself when she comes home from work and that's it take it easy for the evening the WRC hearing I think went fairly well and at the outset I was a little bit concerned that we were slightly behind the starting line insofar as I was kind of reading the adjudicator's view of the case uh, to a certain extent and I was a little bit concerned however as the thing progressed and as we went into the evidence and as the hearing went along and my client gave evidence and the complainant gave evidence and we cross examination and we direct examination and so on as the thing progressed I could see I thought unless I'm mistaken an improvement in our position and uh, I thought we actually turned it around and we went pretty well so I think we've actually a very good chance of defending the claim and even if we lose the claim I think the cost the uh, any award against my client I think will be relatively small uh, given the minor nature of any breach uh, or any act of discrimination I would have thought but anyway that remains to be seen so we'll see what happens I don't know what's going on here now. Is it a, is it a funeral or whatever in Broadford? It's not too often you have a, a crowd like this in Broadford on a any day actually. It must be, I don't know, maybe it's a funeral, maybe not. They're all heading up to the graveyard there now anyway. So that's it, I'm heading home now. This bag of mine is falling apart. This thing keeps coming out. And the handle then, the handle, um, here's the thing, the jig, this goes through the handle and keeps it all in one piece. I keep, oh shoot. Yeah. I gotta fix the bag. This is the lucky bag. Sometimes, yeah, this is the lucky bag. I'm having a long time and it is falling apart, but shite. Normally you can fix it, no problem. Just a question of sliding the bar along here now. Getting it in there. Yeah, there you go. He's fully operational now again. Mm -hmm. Fully operational again, as you can see. Handle is okay. It's well scuffed, this bag. It's well worn, but it's uh, done the job for me for a while, and I sort of see it as a lucky bag to a certain extent. Some people might say it's a bloody lucky bag, but um, it's served me fairly well over a long period of time. And there's a good story actually attached to that, and that is, I bought that on eBay way back in the day, and I was looking for a well-used, well-utilised bag, because... I was only newly qualified and I wanted to give the impression that I was around, around a long time even though I was only newly qualified and I wanted when I went into the district court because I was doing criminal law at the time I wanted people to say I want him I want to pick him because he's old he's bald and he's got that old scuff bag and he must be knocking around a long time and he must have seen a lot of stuff and he's the guy I want and little did they know that I bought the bag on eBay for 10 euros ster or 10 sterling and I was only newly qualified but hey ho you do what you have to do and you tell the story you have to tell and I don't believe it's deception I believe it's good marketing quite frankly and uh, you know you gotta do what you have to do to get clients and so on so that is the story of that bag which I bought on eBay anyway
before I finish off the video actually I'm just back from my run but I wanted to show you the bread the bread I made this bread is sourdough bread sourdough loaf with soft figs and walnuts so that will be the lunch tomorrow and that is going to be a good time a good time but it's uh I like making the sourdough bread. Here we go, we'll get you good sh another shot there now with it. There it is there. Sourdough with uh, soft figs and walnuts. Anyway, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up down below. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.